Welcome back to the Immigration Answers Show. I am Jim Hacking, coming to you live from somewhere not called St. Louis. The sun is out. The waves are beautiful. Hope you all are well. We have a very special guest today. You'll be glad it's another Friday night. She seems to like the Friday night episodes. Here she is. The birthday girl, the one and only Ms. Amani Hacking. Hello, everybody. Amani Job Hacking. Here's the link for everybody. Let me go ahead and copy that so we have it to post. Welcome to this late night edition of the Immigration Answers Show. I'm a little surprised that anybody's here on a Friday <laughs> night. It's it's nine o'clock on a Friday, not a Saturday. And the regular crowd has shuffled in. Good to see everybody. Let us know where you're watching from. Very glad to see everybody. Everyone's wishing you happy birthday, Imani. Thank you. Daniela, Samir, and Dawn, everyone's saying happy birthday. Thank you. We've been having a great time. Our vacation is coming to an end. What do you think about that? I'm not happy about the vacation coming to an end, but I miss my family. I miss my clients. I miss my cases. So we're wrapping it up. Yeah, so we'll be heading back pretty soon here. Um, it's been a wonderful trip, a wonderful week. Good to recharge and to be in the sunlight and away from the cold. <laughs> all right. So uh, we'll probably go about 45 minutes, an hour today. Um, we're going to take all your questions, try to answer as many as you can. It's your boy. Look who's here, Imani. Who is it? Yasher himself. Yasher. Hi, Yasher. Where'd he go? Yasher's in the house. <laughs> Hello, Yasher. Thank you, Yasher. Our good buddy. Everybody's wishing you happy birthday. See, I told you guys they like it when you come on better than oh, me. Oh, I don't think so. They do. They do. All right, well, let's get to it. Looks like Anita's here. Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. Hi. So, remember, I don't know if you remember when I asked you about the farm where the, all right, I was adjusting status and uh, they request, my request for evidence was the proof that I didn't sign that I'm a US citizen on that. Do you remember that case? No, I don't remember the calls from yesterday, much less whenever you called. And so I didn't hear the last you're saying part. You got a request for evidence about whether or not you made a false claim to citizenship. Is that what you said? Yes. yes. Um, okay. So um, I haven't received that yet. The thing is now um, I'm currently out of the, I had to flee from my marital home because of abuse. You're out of your, out of your what? My marital home. Marital home. Okay. Are you yeah. still married? Yes. But of, because of abuse, I had to. Because of abuse. Yes. Okay. So the thing is, you know, first and foremost is you've got to deal with your safety. So you always have to make sure to do whatever you need to do to remain safe. So being out of the family house because of domestic violence is important. Um, but there's still a lot of immigration pieces that go with that. I mean, number one, did did you file your case with a lawyer or did you file it on your own? With a lawyer. And um, mm -hmm. so you're going to need, there's a lot of things that are going to have to happen in order to convert your case. Um, you, there's still a possible path to the United States now if, to, to getting a green card, even, wow. if the, even if the marriage ends. But if you... If you uh, made a false claim to citizenship, that's going to be no, a problem. I did not. I did not. Okay. okay why good. do they think you did? Um, I don't know. Like, um, like he said the last time that maybe because I worked long for a long time with this employer. I don't mm. know. So, so you haven't actually received the request for evidence. I received it, and I actually. <laughs> Got but the letters from the employers. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, they always ask for proof. That's right. Yeah. Yes, and they. Uh, uh, yeah. So the big the, the big question for me is is the marriage over? If the marriage is over, then you need to sort of start over. You're gonna have to file a new form, and it's a whole different plan of attack. Uh -huh if you're going to go the I-360 route instead of the I-130. So you have to make some decisions um, that have that have an impact on your immigration status. 
And you're probably going to have to find a new lawyer because that current lawyer represents both of you. And if the marriage is at, if there are problems with the marriage, that might be a conflict for that current lawyer. Okay. Um, like I said, I was just waiting on a decision after the request for evidence. No, but you're, but I don't think you're, I don't think you're in good shape. I mean, the problem is you, have you had your interview already? Yes. So if they're concerned about a false claim to citizenship and I think, and, and you're out of the marital house, there's a good chance they could come to the house or, or even if they give you the green card later on, you could have trouble because you didn't notify them that you're out of the house. And if they approve the I-130 after you moved out, that could screw up your chances to get citizenship and it could lead them to try to take away your green card in the future. The, I guess basically what I want to say, Anita, is what we're talking about here is bigger than just a phone call on this show. You need to talk to a, a lawyer and you need to make an appointment and you need to come up with a new plan because mm -hmm. what you have on file isn't going to work for you anymore. And you need a copy of everything you've submitted and you, you definitely need a game plan. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Bye, Anita. Good, Good luck. luck. Be, Stay be careful. safe. Be safe. All right. So, you fam wants to know when the old beard's coming back. <laughs> Some people like the beard. Some people don't like the beard. It would have been a good week to grow the beard uh, on vacation, but we cer don't need the certain beard. people don't like the beard. So, <laughs> so there you go. All right. Oh, Rocio, she's a good a good friend friend of the show. She just filed her uh. I seven fifty one. All and right. She got, Good luck she got receded you. pretty quick, quickly. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah, she said Thank she likes you. your contributions. Thank you. All right. Let's talk to Colette. Hi, Colette. Hi, Colette. Hi. Hi, Jim. Hi, Amani. Happy belated birthday. Okay, I, got you. Uh -oh. I have you on full volume. You're going to have to talk a whole lot louder. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, so um, I had two questions, one for myself. Uh, let me try and uh, get my... Now you're on mute. Yeah. It's okay. We can hear you. Go yeah. ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have two questions, uh, one for myself and one for my friend. So um, I was an F1 student, and then um, my program end date was May 22nd, 2021. And, um, of course, I have a grace period of 60 days. Um, and so my first question is, I'm wondering whether they, there was ever a time that uh, USCIS considered me out of status since I filed my adjustment of status uh, during the 60 day grace period. Mm -hmm. are, you married so, to US, are you married to a US citizen? Yeah. Then it doesn't even matter. Even if you're out of status, it's forgiven. Oh, okay. Uh, so my second question is for my friend. Um, so her adjustment of status was approved in September, 2020. And um, uh, so recently she found out that her husband uh, was um, involved in a lot of infidelity uh, just January of uh, last month, and uh, she's uh, trying to see if she can um, file uh, the, the I-751 on her own, uh, but uh, she's not really sure um, when the earliest time, when is the earliest best time to do it. So she has her two-year green card already? When did she get her two-year green card? Yeah, she got her two-year green card approved in September 2020. Okay, so yeah, September 2020. Mm -hmm. So that green card should be valid for two years, 90 mm -hmm. days before that two years expires. So September 2020 through September 22, 90 days before September. What is that? June, July, August, September. So in June, mm -hmm. from June to September 2022, she should file a 751 on her own. She mm -hmm. can file. Well, is she going to be divorced? What's her plan? What's her What's her plan uh -huh. with the marriage? Yeah, she 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 was really hurt. Um, it was multiple women, so she is uh, planning uh, probably planning on getting a divorce, uh, but oh, it's not divorce. finalized yet. Um, yeah. And uh, so she's wondering if she gets her divorce finalized by the time her earliest filing date comes up, uh, whether that would be the best time to file the seven fifty one, or would it be better to um, start filing in case the divorce takes longer? So, so that's it. That yeah. Go ahead. You you can't file it early. The only time, well, right. unless she gets divorced, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. If she's divorced, right. If she divorces sooner, then she can file a 751 at any time. And, mm -hmm. and, and she has to get divorced in order to file on her own. She can't not mm -hmm. get divorced. So she needs to hurry up because okay. she's, on, she's on a ticking clock. Now, if, if let's say she filed for divorce tomorrow, mm -hmm. let's, let's say her green card expires on my birthday, September 13th, 2022. Okay. 
if she's not divorced by by the end date on her green card, she should file for divorce solo, but she's going to get a request for evidence for the divorce. So she needs a fast divorce. Okay. So when, when I have people in these scenarios, I tell them, look, I know you're sad. I know you're upset about your spouse cheating on you. Um, but if I were you, it's much more important for you to get this divorce done quickly than it is to like hold out for some extra money or something. She needs that divorce to be done as soon as possible. So well, well you either work on the marriage, right? If you, she's if, done. If, yeah, if she's, she's done, done with the marriage, fine. Then, then, then if she's already decided she's going to file for divorce, then the sooner the better, then she can okay. file and move on on her own. Um, okay. But Jim said, if you, file that 751 on your own and you're not divorced, they're going to ask for that divorce decree. So we right. have clients that do that. They, they file for the 751. They say, I'm going to get divorced. It's going to happen quickly. I've never, I've yet to see in my life a quick divorce. Okay. Right. <laughs> but, 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 but also 751s are taking two years now. So okay. it might work for her benefit. I have a question. Does, mm -hmm. does the U.S. citizen spouse know that she knows that he's been catting around? Yes, uh, they had a big fight, so uh, they know. But I, I don't think he's going to be uh, malicious. I don't think he's going to want to uh, say anything bad about her. So um, I don't know. That okay, would be the so, best scenario. So, if he so, helped. so then a couple of things. Number one is what she should be gathering as much marital evidence as she can, because she's going to have to prove mm -hmm. that the marriage was legit, even though it ended in divorce. That's one mm -hmm. thing. And number mm -hmm. two is if what you say is true, if he says he's not going to be malicious, then what I would do is I would encourage her to get with an immigration lawyer right now right. so that you, you can get a statement from him under oath, an affidavit right now before things get nasty, mm -hmm. where he says, yeah, this was a legitimate marriage. Yeah, it just didn't work out. Maybe he says the reason we got divorced is because I had cheated on her. Maybe he doesn't. However, however much we can get down in writing under oath mm -hmm. and an affidavit, because that prevents him from trying to screw her later and yeah. it prevents... And it prevents USCIS from knocking on his door and trying to get him to say bad stuff about your family. Oh, right. Right. That sounds like a good plan. Okay. That's a very good plan. And we've done that many times. That's our favorite oh, okay. trick. <laughs> we've done that many right. times. Because okay. it's, not, it's not fair. You know, marriage yeah. end. That doesn't mean that it wasn't a, a legitimate marriage, right? Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you. Okay, good what? luck. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Those suck. Those that's cases not, suck. Yeah, but that's really those, hard. Those are certain. I mean, there's certain types of cases that having a good lawyer can help on. Those are ones with a lot of fact development that lawyers can really help. Absolutely. I've seen people just kind of wing it and send a bunch of stuff because to them, they love this person and they were married. So they send like a few pictures and, you know, maybe a lease and they think, oh, it's a valid marriage. And guess what? USCIS wants to know. Where are your credit card statements? Where are your, or, where are your bank statements? Or sometimes the U.S. citizen was like very controlling and kept all the mm -hmm. documentation and that can really put the foreign national in a tough spot. Yeah. But sometimes I think the hardest cases to prove are the ones that seem so obvious to the person. Yeah. Right. Because you know, you're married, so you don't have to go. You don't feel like you have to go out of your way to prove something you already know to be true. Those are the hardest ones, I think, but definitely capable of doing it. Hi, Samir. Hi, Samir. Hello, Jim and Amani. Uh, so good to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, I have a question. So it's it's regarding the delayed case of my uh, citizenship. I came here in 2015. Uh, I applied for my naturalization uh, in uh, June 17 of 2020. Uh, first of all, they took a long time uh, to issue my biometrics, almost like 11 months. Mm. So and after that, I have been waiting for my naturalization. But I mean, for the interview, but I haven't received any update as of yet. What country are you from? I'm from Nepal. Nepal. And how did you get your green card? As a refugee or what? No, it's a diversity visa program. Diversity, diversity. Good for you. Good yeah, for you. Okay, okay, so what about this? Uh, where, which field office will have your interview? Uh, it's the Salt Lake City's, uh, the local USAS yeah. office. So so that's not a particularly busy office. Mm -hmm. You're almost, a, you're, you're heading on to two years without anything right yeah i mean i actually helped other people like apply for naturalization even my friend he also came on around the same time in fact uh, one year later than me but he already had his uh interview scheduled for this month but i'm i've been waiting for like almost two two years now 
So if you had to guess, do you have any idea why they might be delaying it? I have no idea. Uh, I kept on um, like uh, doing an inquiry of the, the case status, you know, like in the USAS help center. Um, the the chat, the person who chat chatted me on the, the USAS thing, they told me like uh, my case was actually uh, transferred to the benefit center or service uh, mm. because I had a small issue while filling. Like um, there was this section in which like it asked for your marital status and I'm single, I'm never married. So it got check mark as single. But then on the second uh, part, it asked if uh, I was married to a US citizen and then somehow it got on yes. So mm. probably that was an issue. And then, then I asked about that and then they told me to write a letter uh, to the benefit center regarding what the problem was and how to fix that. Hmm. But after that, have you, I haven't... Have, you, um, hmm. have you lived in any countries other than Nepal? No. And you you came on the diversity visa. You weren't here on a student visa and adjusted. You just no. came flat out. Good for you. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, we do know that right now the diversity visa is under attack at USCIS. I mean, it could be that your case is held up because of that, but but maybe not. I mean... Could you sue them now? Yeah, you can sue them now. You might want to wait a little bit. I might wait till June just to see if anything happens. Maybe save yourself some money. And then if, if it goes at two years, yeah. I think if you sue them, I, if you sued them, then we'd get you your interview sometime in the summer and the case would be wrapped up by September. So I, I might just sit tight. If you wanted to sue today, I'd be up for it. But I think if you wanted to wait a month or two, see what happens, that might save you some money. Okay. Oh, did you file electronically? Can I ask you, Samir? Did you were you online filing electronically and you checked a bunch of boxes, or did you do it by hand? Okay. Yes, I, I filed it online. So probably the mouse, the cursor, yeah, yeah, mess up with the filing. The but the then, online stuff. Did you keep a, yeah. you kept a copy of what you submitted? Like it emails yes. you right back, yes. and yes. you saw the yes after you submitted it. After I submitted, and then it was yeah. after like two months or something. No, no, that's not that it's delay. It's it's an inconsistency in his application. Yeah. I mean, I. What about? Um, yeah, that's just an interesting note. Yeah. When did you actually have your biometrics? Uh, it was on uh, July, July of. No, I think it was June of five of twenty twenty one. That so was like a year. Almost, a year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, like like I said, if you don't hear anything by May or June, and you want to sue them, let us know, and we can we can certainly help you with that. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. Thank you Thanks, so much. Samir. All right. Good Bye, luck. See ya. All right. Remember, if you're in the waiting room and you want to come on, you got to be on camera. Otherwise, we're not going to pull you up. All right. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. How are you? I'm good. All right. Here's Mona. Hey. Thank you so much. After many tries, finally, I'm in the call. Thank you so much, Mr. Hey. Yeah. Um, I have some question about my siblings. Um, uh, the first of my uh, sister, um, she um, came here in the United States last year. Uh, she married 2019 with a divorced um, um, person who had already kids. So right after she came, uh, after two weeks, uh, the her husband said he doesn't want to live with her. Mm. So I don't know he like he was interested with somebody else or what happened. I don't know. So but somehow she got the uh, uh, the green card, uh, which is ten years. And um, so when, a, oh, oh oh diversity. I didn't hear that part. Gotcha. So they came on the diversity visa, right? Uh, no, no, no. It's, it's a spouse visa. Yeah. She spouse married visa. with a she married with a, a divorced um, person. Divorced. Okay. She married. And okay. Oh, so that's okay. So what oh. what is this person's first name? Uh, I'm sorry. Somehow, because the people there in the in the uh, your you know they follow to. I'm, unfortunately, I cannot give you the name. Okay. I'll call her. I'll call her Mary. Okay. okay. So Mary Mary is married to someone. And mm -hmm. Mary, Mary gets an immigrant visa based on marriage to a U.S. citizen, right? That's yeah, that's right. Mary shows up in the United States mm -hmm. after getting approved at the embassy for an immigrant visa. Yes, that's right. She has been married at that point for two years, so she's given a ten-year green card. Yes. Right. And shortly after she arrives, her husband says, "Listen, I don't want really to be married to you anymore." I'm going to, I'm going, I'm leaving mm -hmm. and you're sort of on your own, but she did actually get the, the green card. Yeah. After, uh, because they tried to hide everything, but somehow like, you know, we got the green card because we changed the address. 
but uh, we just you know pressurize them because this is her legal you know documents you cannot you know uh, good i mean good yeah for you. all right so, so but the she, question yeah, yeah but my question point? is because uh the the visa on she got because somebody made us a confused like they said this is a on the visa it says the cri so sometimes people i mean um you know the yeah, uscis they send by mistake for 10 years yeah, so well, so the question is, on the day she received the green card, had she been married more than two years to the American? Uh, one day less, uh, two years. Dang it. So, so, so yeah. let's just say her anniversary is June 21st. For example, I'm going to say like uh, her, uh, she married uh, the person on uh, June, the, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, March 3rd, um, sorry, not March, April the 13th. And uh, she got like uh, her visa interview like 20 uh, May 22 last year. Right, but but how much time? So on the green card, it should say no, no, on the green card. Uh, on the green card, it says uh, the right time, uh, like you know, on the June June 16th. Yeah. So the so when the green card was issued. She was married two two years and one month. Oh yeah, def definitely yes. So she, yeah. she should be okay. Okay, but some people say because on that uh, the visa say the CRI, you know, many yeah. times it happens. You know, she got the green card because of by mistake, right. like you know, yeah. ten no, years. I think, I, I think she has the better argument there. I think she has the better argument. the The question is when the green card is issued, when lawful permanent residence is bestowed on her, mm -hmm. how long has she been married at that point? 25 months, two years, and one month, I think she wins. Oh, okay. So my uh, question is now, um, you know, like, um, we're filing that because she's separated, right? Like, it's almost like a few months now. So, yeah. um, so my question is, like, can she get the divorce, like, you know, as a, like a mutual thing, or she has to hire the lawyer? Because I have like a question related to this, like, if she goes out of country, it's gonna be any problem? Or if after the divorce, which is gonna happen in a few months, can she marry to any like a, you know the person who comes here for the as a student visa, who person does not have any green card, will she have any problem for her citizenship? Yes, she will. Not leaving. Leaving's fine. I mean, once she she has her ten year green card. Mm -hmm. She should be okay. Now let let's let's talk about a couple of things, mm -hmm. and you feel free to chime yeah, yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, I was the first thing I was going to say is, um, is she already filing for divorce? What's her plan? Yes, she's separated, and divorce going to be final, like you know, in uh, three three or four months. Oh, she already filed for divorce. Uh, it's, it did not file it yet, but because okay, so we, we, we're yet. talking to the lawyer, lawyer says, lawyer says, uh, like he gonna do in a couple of weeks. So, but my question is, is going to be any problem because she going to hire the lawyer to for the divorce or no, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who hires the lawyer for the divorce. What matters is if USCIS came knocking, could they prove that this was still a valid marriage? Right. Yeah. You, even though, you, even though, she, even though, sorry, no, no, go ahead. even though she doesn't have a conditional green card, this is always going to be an issue for her because her husband basically moved out right after she got here, which makes them wonder whether the marriage was valid. So when she applies for citizenship five years from now, she's going to have to prove up this marriage that it wasn't fraud. They're always going to be able to go back to the marriage. Always so she, the source. She needs to be gathering all that marital evidence from now exactly. as much as she can. So she has it later when she applies for citizenship. So what kind of um, what kind of evidence she needs to gather? Because so if she goes to hacking law practice dot com backslash marital dash evidence she can download it for free we it's our whole list it's hacking law i'll put it in the notes yeah um, please. and then do you want to talk about uh the pivot the pivot yeah. yeah so her biggest problem is if she tries to sponsor somebody else <laughs> they're going to always look back and say you how did you get your green card okay they're always going to us us is always going to go back and say how did you get your green card it was through a different spouse is the rule four years in one day or something? No, four that, years? It's four years. Yeah. There's a four year look back. Yeah. So if if she sponsors someone within four years of getting that green card, mm -hmm. they're, they're going to say that marriage is fraudulent. The original marriage. Yeah. The original marriage is fraudulent. You shouldn't have gotten that green card because now you're sponsoring somebody else. So that'd be the dumbest. In other words, that'd be the dumbest thing she yeah. could do. That's don't a really do, bad that. idea. Oh, okay. okay. Not until she gets her citizenship. So have her get her citizenship. Then 
whenever she's eligible for that, she's probably, you know, she's years from that now. She's yeah, got to wait years. five years. Yeah. So she's got a little, she's got a long road ahead of her. So, but um, if, if yeah, she, she married to the green card person here, which is who lives here in the United States, it's going to be any problem with the green card person or just, um, oh. basically, problem is like a re, remarry. I if she remarried. She was, I thought you, you said, said she was going to marry someone on the F1. Someone. Yeah, you said she was going to sponsor yeah, somebody. That, that's my, my question, too. I mean, I'm asking, like, all these small, small, uh, you okay. know, information. Like, you know, yeah. if he married, yeah. like, the person or if he married, yeah. you know. He has to sponsor. If she was going to sponsor somebody, they're mm -hmm. going to look back and say, oh, you just got this green card in the last four years. You can't get a green card from. I mean, think about it. You can't get a green card from one person. And mm -hmm. then once you get it, after you get divorced, you go marry somebody else and sponsor them. Because that looks like fraud right and plus okay. plus when we already know that her original marriage is going to be under attack when she applies for citizenship because her husband moved out shortly after she arrived the mm -hmm. last thing the last thing we want to do is, is to give them more hand. more reasons yeah. Yeah. to worry about her marriage so she should let the dust settle she shouldn't be thinking about getting married at all yeah until her divorce is final she shouldn't even <laughs> be talking about getting married divorce is final and, and, she, and, she, should, and, she, and she shouldn't be picking people based on their immigration status she should be picking them because they're in love and she shouldn't say, well, it's okay for me to marry. She shouldn't get married at all until she gets her citizenship. Because her green uh, card is very much at risk. Very much. It's a miracle that she has her green card. Yeah, only because okay? you guys are smart and got yes, it. Yes, yes. She's lucky that she has her green card. And now that she has it, she's got to hang on to it, right? She's got to hang <laughs> on to it and make sure she doesn't cross any laws and, and draw attention to herself. That's what she needs to do. So basically she, she is stuck. Like until she get the uh, citizenship, she cannot marry, remarry, right? If she wants to stay in the country and not have them look at her green card and try and take it back, yeah, you can look at it stuck. You can look at it as lucky. She's she could, lucky she has a green card. She could marry a citizen or a green card holder and not have to sponsor that. Not spon the the problem is the oh. sponsoring. I mean, but but first of all, she should let the divorce settle and let things like wait a year to get married. Don't don't just turn right around and get married again. Because again, it, you're drawing it, attention. Let it look natural. Oh, okay, okay. You don't want to draw attention to the marriage. The prior okay. marriage, the new marriage, any marriage. So, Mr. James, okay. you said, like, is she okay? She married to a green card holder and a citizen person, right? Yeah, that'd be fine. But okay. again, not right away. Chill that. Chill out. Chill out. Like at least one year, right? You said. I'd say a year. Yeah. Okay. Okay. My my second question, my other uh, sibling, um, uh, she is in in my uh, back home, my country, and. Uh, I sponsor her. I mean, I apply, uh, uh, you know, did for their immigrant visa. Uh, this uh, right now that her status is showing uh, her case in uh, uh, visa center back in my country. Right. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, her husband cheated on her um. and uh, she separated. Mm. So I know I want to remove her husband's name from that like you know which is i already you know applied for my sister uh-huh so what should i do what should i do i mean first of all mona i bet your sisters just hate men what the heck <laughs> exactly. you, got, you got some some bad men in yeah but, 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 this is, but this is by my another sis, sister actually <laughs> oh no, i know she doesn't oh okay so um so the has the I one thirty already been approved at USCIS yes. and now at the National yes. Visa Center? Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. And are they getting divorced? Uh, yes. Is it is the divorce on file? And not file because she's waiting for me. Like because I don't have enough information to tell. So yeah. then I I I call them, a uh, USCIS right National Visa Center. They said I have to fill the form. I sent to them, to uh, according to remove uh, the uh, her spouse name. I've never done that before, but yeah. I'm sure that there's a way to do it. Um, what uh, what what year did you file for your sister? Uh, 2009. 2000. So she still she still has a couple years to wait, right? Uh, no, they said like uh, that right now they are doing it. I'm sorry, I did a 2008. They're doing 2007 right now. I think so I'll, I don't know. It's one uh, one yeah, year or two years. Yeah. So tell your sister go ahead and file for divorce. No problem there. And then once. She files for the divorce. I would send that to the National Visa Center. And then once the divorce is final, I'd send that to them again. Okay. Because when I talked to them, they said it's better to do it right now so they can remove uh, his name yeah. from the case. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm just saying, keep... You don't keep, have proof yet. Keep, yeah, you can do that. As the process goes goes along, mm -hmm. go, ahead, go ahead and keep them updated. Okay. Okay. Uh, if she just, uh, just a separation happens, like I say, like, uh, you know, she doesn't want a divorce. 
but do you think there's a possibility he can come with her? Uh, no, most likely not. Not not with it. Not with you guys being two years away. Oh, okay. All okay, right, so, Mona, we got other people waiting. Okay. 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 My last one. Thank you so much for oh, your invitation. All right. Bye. All right. I got called out here. What do you mean? What's Read somebody it. say? I feel like Jim is being nice because of my. <laughs> I'm always nice. Oh, that's funny. I'm okay. always nice, except right. when people ask me about the damn K3. All right. Let's, let's keep moving. All right, Thank we'll keep you. Moving. Let's, let's keep moving. Hey, Kojo. Hi, Kojo. Hello. Hey, Hakin. How are you and Miss uh, Madame Amira? Amani. Amani. I'm sorry. No <laughs> problem. How are you doing? Amira is nice good to hear me. You can call me Amira. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, uh, I apply for my two keys in Ghana, mm -hmm. and I apply in June. And now I'm seeing uh, they say uh, your thing is under reviewed, and nothing is outstanding for almost a month now. Hmm. All right, let's back up. What's your immigration status? Uh, citizen and okay and did you always list these children on all of your prior applications before applying when you got your green card and your citizenship yes when i got my green card yes i did okay because some sometimes people will come to us kojo and they'll say hey jim guess what i i'm a citizen and i want to apply for these kids but i never listed them on any prior immigration application before and so you have an inconsistency, but but you've always listed your kids. For your citizenship application too, you listed yes, your when kids I was doing where my, they live. Yeah, when I was doing my citizenship, I sent all the documents to them, so everything was under during their, their birth citizenship. certificates. Yeah, so they yeah, have their names, the dates of birth. And yes. back when you when you get, when you got your did you did you come to the United States on an immigrant visa or like on a B one B two and and adjusted here in the United States? I come under DVA DVA. Oh, good. Oh, a lot of DV see, people yeah, there. Okay, like good. That. So, but they were always mm -hmm. listed back then on all those old applications. They were listed. Okay. Okay. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. When you did diversity, did you list your kids also? No. The diversity application? No. That at that time, yeah, no. See, that's the problem. How old are they? Um, one is uh, thirteen, another one is twelve. Sorry, oh, at, uh, twelve and uh, fourteen. So, so just so just to be clear, you're telling mm -hmm. me that when you applied for the diversity visa, you, may not you did have. not list these two. You may not have listed not these have. two children. Yes, because at that time, it was not. Uh, uh, we were still having issues, so I didn't know whether that was my case. Yeah. So, Kojo, Kojo, here's the problem. Did, yeah, did problem. you did you see how I did you see how I I knew about this issue even before you brought it up? Did you see because I see this all the time. They don't yeah. like it when you don't they don't like it when you don't list your kids on your diversity visa application and then list it on your citizenship and your green card. So I think you might have trouble. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But okay. I think this case might be delayed because they're going to be confused. They're going to say, Kojo, where did these kids come from that you never listed back when you applied for your diversity visa? They're going back over all these old applications trying to find these little inconsistencies to try to screw you. So you might have a fight on your hands yeah, and you're going to have to show them that you would have gotten this diversity visa even if you had listed the children on the original application. They're not going to like what you're trying to do. And they're going to want an explanation. And we shouldn't talk any more about this. You should yeah. get a lawyer to look at everything and help you move forward, okay? We shouldn't talk any more about this. On camera, on camera. So, so how can I, because I applied by myself, how can I do it and then um, get your number line? I'm going to put all the contact information in the, in on the video and in the chat and then you can we can go from there okay okay all right okay, thanks, thanks kojo. kojo thank you yeah okay. all okay. right good call stopping to talk about that yeah we we don't need to talk any more about that we yep. need to figure out what happened and and try to help him solve it all right let's talk to amin hi amin hello hey guys hello. how are you jim how are you amani great time amazing hey. couple <laughs> what can we help you with all right said the question is uh if you remember me from a couple months ago so we finally transferred the case to islamabad from Kabul, afghanistan good for you and, good. yeah thank you and my 
And when I submitted the request, I put the entry visa, the visa, the entry stamp to Pakistan and everything, and they just immediately transferred the case to Islamabad. I received a letter, and, and the CX says that we um, we identified you will notify you are notified of an interview date. But I also received an email from NVC says that hey, this is your new case number, the interview location, but there is no um, there is no enter, there is no um, interview date because maybe the case is just transferred to the embassy mm-hmm. now. Is, uh, that was confusing, and I have two other questions too. Well, so that doesn't surprise me. I mean, you're talking about moving from one system, Kabul, to Islamabad. The fact that SIAC gets updated in weird ways, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Okay. So the second one, so it says in transit, when it gets to the ready state, sh- when should I file a uh, DS-160? Is this a fiancé case? Yeah, F1. Yeah, fiancé case, yes. You haven't already filed the DS-160? No, I have not because the case was at NVC. I haven't. I was waiting for it to move to um, to Islamabad. Then just like once it settled somewhere because it was out of nowhere because Co- embassy in Kabul just closed. Americans just got out of it. Just do that right away. So I would I would do that right away. Yeah. yeah. If it's unlocked, you should do it right away. Yep. Yeah, I can. Is- I lo- okay. I logged in to NVC. I, I mean, sorry. I will. I'll. I will fill the DS one sixty form now. Yep. Yeah, okay. take your time. Make sure you're accurate and have all the information. Make sure it's accurate, okay? Don't okay. just click a bunch of boxes. Take your time. Sure. And, and keep sure. Thank you, Amani. So since she doesn't know English, I mean, she's supposed to be filling. I will fill everything and say that I filled it and let her sign it. She has to review everything. Everything is going to oh, yeah. be under oath by her. Yeah. So you can yeah. help her, but she needs to confirm every single line. Because if something's wrong, and we've had, we've seen this happen many times, then they say, oh, I didn't do that. My cousin did that or my husband or fiance or this company I hired. And guess what? Sense. USCIS says, no, you agreed that this is all true. So she Make- has to confirm that every sentence, every statement is correct. Sure. Makes perfect sense. So should I just do it now or make it to the ready state? Because they just transferred the case yesterday. Yeah, I'd wait a couple of days. I'd let things Soon. settle down. Maybe on yeah. Monday. Okay, on Monday. Perfect. And may I ask one more question, please? Sure. Okay, so one of my friends, um, uh, one of my friends, uh, I was a translator in the in the um, a fiance based marriage case, mm-hmm. and they're happily married. They went through the interview, and they sponsored the. They looked at the sponsor document. Everything was successful. He was like, "Oh, I haven't reviewed your uh, sponsor documentation, so they haven't given the green card yet." The, this, the officer said, I have to review the sponsor uh, documentation further. I, I just messed it. He was like, I just didn't. He, in the interview, like, my, you know, my friend said, he was like shocked. I was like, oh, how did I miss this uh, a sponsor, you know, sponsor documentation? I'll review it, then we will update the case. What does that mean? I think that's BS. Hmm. I think there's something else going on because they usually don't review the, the co-sponsor, joint sponsor stuff at the field office that's all done at the service center before the case gets sent to the this fiance case it's a fian- it was a fiance case and now she he has a work permit now but, but you, was- said, you said you went to the green card interview and you served as the translator right no it was the like you know after uh, adjustment of status my apologies yeah oh yeah yeah so you didn't write. yeah yeah i'm sorry i thought you meant something so else so okay. i i don't know i mean how long ago was that interview it was like uh, two two months ago what field office it's in uh, Washington D.C., sir. I think something else is going on. They already got their work card. You said. Yeah, yeah they have the work yeah. permit. Yeah. So he, they must have misunderstood. Maybe you guys misunderstood when he said, "I have to look at the coast sponsor." Maybe he said, "I have to review the file before I issue the green card." So they're not just going to look at the I-864 because they wouldn't have issued the work card unless they thought the I-864 was legitimate. So maybe yeah. you misunderstood the officer. Okay, maybe that's the case because the interview finished. He was like, everything works good, but he was like, I need to review this one document. It was a, if one case, uh, married, everything perfect, is genuine. Yeah. They went through, everything works fine, and the lawyer went with them there too. I was translating the answer. All the answers were, you know, effective and good, but right. like, this so just this happened. 
Yeah, I think they're just reviewing the file. If it just happened a month ago, month ago, give them another thirty days. Give them another thirty days and see what happens. And then sue them. All right, I mean, we're gonna roll, buddy. All, All right, right, thank you. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Thank hey, you. Bye bye. All right, now. Yes. Next up. Next up. What do you got? A, a former client of ours. Uh, I'm going to have him tell his story. You're going to like it. You don't know about this case. Okay. But he's a great uh, a great guy. We're very happy for him. And here he is. <laughs> uh, Hi. How are you guys doing? Hey. Bro, hey, Jim. Yeah, we're back now. You know, we, uh, you know, we had a little bit better of a bad connection because we was actually going through uh, Webster on the south part of Houston. And uh, I guess we was in a, a lot of heavy traffic. So. No yeah, worries. While we're driving, okay. tell Imani, tell Imani your story because she hasn't really heard it yet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the first time I, this is the first time Hi, I met you. Hi. <laughs> That's cool. Boy. Yeah, this yeah. is my, this is my wife. Yeah, uh, nice who I've been you. fighting for for the last four years to get Aww. here. Um, yeah, well, from I'm Liberia. So and uh, yeah, my story is like this. And and you know, by the way, how, how you doing? I, this is the first time I got to see you online. So I said, man, I really got to, I really have to uh, tune in. Yeah. Good. So, I'm uh, glad you did. Just tell me yeah. what's going on. So what yeah. Happened? So so really, you know, a long story short is just that you know we got married back in 2017 December, and mm -hmm. everything went smoothly uh, up until uh, they put my wife on administrative processing at the embassy in Liberia, Monrovia, and mm -hmm. uh, they put her on uh, administrative processing for uh, 10 months, and they called her back like that in uh, August of 2018 and said that her documents were fake. And um, we, we were, uh, we got married traditionally out there in respect of tradition and values and how everything is, which is legally observed in, uh, in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And so there's two ways to get married. You can get married with a traditional way and you can get married the civil way through the court. And then there's a ministry of internal affairs in the country that you can get married through, right? And sure. so we did everything the proper way. But then they said that the documents were fake, but they never told me in the whole 10 months, they never sent me an email or call, mm -hmm. nothing. And mm -hmm. everything, when you type on the uh, USCI, uh, the, the state.gov website, and you check your status, it just says, uh, uh, well, ready. And like, I don't even know what that meant. But then they called my wife back and made an impromptu phone call and said that come to the embassy only to tell her that the documents were fake. Yeah. 2019. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah, which was yeah, which was uh, yeah, 2019. Yeah, it was 2019, mm. August 2019, after she mm. was at the embassy that November of 2018. So after mm. all those months, you know, yeah, it ended up being that way. So I'm like in complete disarray, shock, and uh, a lawyer here locally that my cousin brought me to. He really didn't know what he was doing. The guy was really just trying to get money from us. And I was just because, you know, the desperation trying to just figure out what I could do, because I wanted to make sure that I did everything that I could possibly to try to get an answer from my wife. And because the family was waiting, like, what's going on with this guy? Is this guy even right. serious? Yeah. And right. the guy just took my that. money. And I mean, he I took like four. He took like he took like almost like five grand from me. And I mean, and I'm, tell, and I'm telling you, a lot of these, a lot of these guys, they they just prey on you, your desperation, and they just take your money, and they say, oh yeah, we're gonna go ahead and file again, but you have to, but I and I always thought like in my mind, why would you file again if you don't even know what took you out the first time, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm just, so I'm just left here trying to figure mm -hmm. out what's going on. So I'm praying. So I'm, you know, I'm, my church family uh, helped me out, and. I end up uh, tuning into YouTube, and I saw I saw your husband. You found and, Mr. You know, Jim. Yeah, 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 Mr. Jim, Mr. Hacking, and you know I was tuning into a and couple he of said his shows. Yeah, I prayed. About it, yeah, I, prayed I prayed about it. I really didn't want to, you know, be too public about everything because I'm a real, you know, uh, you know, minorable, quiet person, you know, private person. Mm -hmm. And uh, and long story short, I mean, the, you know, I called. And I spoke to a couple of other lawyers before, uh, man, uh, just, you know, uh, shout out to Haley, shout out to Tamara. I mean, they really were really nice, um, really nice, really helpful with me and everything. Nice. And they actually, uh, you know, was really uh, kind and, and helping me you know, speak to Mr. Hacking. And they said, man, you have a case, you know, and they was able to uh, and Mr. Hacking was able to speak to me. And 
and I got, you know, I got on the payment plan. It was real easy. Everything was, was real easy, oh, man. Everything was, you know, the lawsuit nice and everything. And I'm telling you, story. yeah, that writ of mandamus really works. It's like, oh, a, yeah. it's like a, a silver a bullet. It really works. Silver those, bullet. That's what yeah, we like I'm to Because they don't talk to you. They, they, I mean, you just sitting there waiting, the, waiting. The lawsuit was the one that helped us to, to, to know what exactly went on. Yeah, what, what happened. And then, I mean, they just hit us with all this paperwork saying, oh, she was now free to marry because... My wife had a uh, uh, my, my wife had a previous event, you know, a marriage mm -hmm. before, and mm -hmm. then uh, that, but that 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 didn't, you know, that stuff was taken care of. But what it was is the documentation. It was saying that it was fraudulent, and it wasn't right. what it was. It. After yeah, because you know, and then you know when, when they saw when they sent us a notice of intent to revoke, the notice of intent to revoke said you know that the documents are fraud. I wasn't free to marry my wife. And then that's when, uh, you know, Brother so Gus, Jim, he can talk so about I'm going to jump in. So Gus, so Gus says, Jim, I'm going to Liberia. I'm going to prove that this that these documents are real. And I said, Gus, this is what I said. I know I know exactly where I was sitting in the office. I said, Gus, I've seen this. I've seen this 40 times now, never from Liberia, mm -hmm. always for me from Nigeria and Ghana. But I'd never seen it from Liberia. Kenya. Mm -hmm. But I'd see in Kenya. I'd mm -hmm. seen a lot of fake divorce decrees and fake. Alleged, government documents. Alleged. Well, the ones that the government concluded yeah. were fake. Mm -hmm. So Gus said, I don't care, Mr. Jim. I'm going. I said, Gus, you're crazy. This is never going to work. And he went. And Yay! He, he proved, he proved. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. That's what I like. I like a fighter. That's awesome. That's yeah. what you got to well, do. Well, I, 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 I love this woman here, and I, <laughs> and I really believe, and I really believe, you know, in 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 the, in the in the scripture when it says, "When a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing and obtained favor from the Lord." And I really, really found my wife, and I really loved this woman. And I kept going back every six months for the last four years, whatever my job permitted me to do, because I work of in the refinery. Of course, of course. And here's so, the thing: you know, I they, did my, you know, they were wrong. They were yeah. wrong. You showed them they were wrong, and yeah. then yeah. You they made a typo. It was a they, it was a clerical error they made on our documents and they didn't register it with the revenue service. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I got a local keep... lawyer. They was able to find it. The the minister of the of the internal affairs sent a, a apology yeah, letter. Yeah, they made yeah. Uh, apology letter saying that they made yeah. the mistake and everything. Yeah. And I mean, it well, quickly reversed everything. Good you for know? you guys. Good for yes. you guys because you, you just needed a place to tell the truth. Here's mm -hmm. what happened. Like how. Yes. Just listen to us, but nobody will listen unless you sue them. When you get, to I'm that telling point, you, you I'm them. telling you. So that's what yeah. we do. Well, good. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, that story. So thank you. I'm so, so happy to this, see yeah, you both. This, this is the lady thank that. Thank you, Mr. Hockey. I do appreciate your tireless effort in uh, opening a lawsuit for us. It really helped us a lot. Oh, we were that's actually that's praying. Great. We all were praying about it because everything have to back it up with prayers. Yeah, so awesome. I thank God for I everything, and I want to appreciate you and your family for everything. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming thank on, guys. You guys. We love you so much. We're so thank, happy for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> and and uh, like I say, a writ of mandamus it works. So if anybody's listening, if it man man sue them because that's the only way you're gonna get their attention. I'm telling yes. you, you got to fight to the and fight solve whatever you need. You gotta do that. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way. Yeah, and, and pray, and pray. And pray. Oh, that's nice. That's it. Thanks, All right, guys. you guys. Take care. Have a Thank great you night. so Thanks much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Right. Oh, that was nice. Gus, I think Gus was tearing up. Oh, that's adorable. There. I love that. I love that. I don't know how much time right, we have we got, left. We got a couple more calls. Time for a okay. couple more calls. Moose has been waiting. Hi, Musa. Hi, Jim. How are you? Good, this is good. the first time I am just attending your uh, streamline. I have only two, one coming. question, actually. Thank you. Uh, I have always already watching, uh, but this is the first time I am just uh, attending. So I have applied EB2 and IW visa in October, and uh, I am in adjustment of status position. And if I have a job offer, will it be useful for me to expedite the uh, situation? This is my question. Okay, so first of all, I don't know if you, well, I don't know if you've heard me talk about this before, Musa, but I believe that way too many people apply for national interest waiver that shouldn't be applying for national interest waiver. I often ask myself or ask them, if, if you're so exceptional, why won't an employer sponsor you? So I'm sort of harsh on these. I think most NIW and everybody and his brother is filing NIWs right now. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you know, to me, it's all about who wrote your letters of recommendation. How recognized in the field are you? If your letters of recommendation were written by people that you teach with or that you were a grad student with or that are in your department or back from your home country that you knew in school, that's not going to work. It's going to be, am, what industry am I in? What field of study am I in? Are the top people in my field of study writing my letters of recommendation? Because if it's just your buddies, it's not going to work. Uh, no, no, I have a, uh, I believe that I have a good reference letter, good recommendation letter, even from U U.S. and even from the uh, U.S. government as well. But what, in order, um, what, what's your current immigration status? Uh, I am in United States and B2, I came to B2 and I have applied for uh, adjustment of status. Off of an E2, did you say? B2, B2. 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 Yes. B2, yeah. Okay, so that, that brings up another question. No. When did you enter the United States? In June, in, uh, last year, two, uh, 21 June. And when did you file your national interest waiver I-140? October. October. So, so we've been seeing, we've been seeing in these kinds of cases, we've been seeing them in fact, I just did a lawsuit on someone and it's probably going to get denied because they don't believe that you came with non-immigrant intent. Mm -hmm. They believe that you knew you were going to come here and apply for that national interest waiver. Um, and and I, I don't want you to talk about this on camera right now. If you want to call the office, we can talk about it. Okay. Okay. But I think your I think your case has big problems. I would never, ever, I would never, ever file for adjustment on a national interest waiver I-140 with that someone on a B1, happen. B2. I would never do it. I understand. So I don't know if a case. lawyer filed it for you or you filed it on your own, but no, I think you're going to have serious, I think your case is going to have serious problems. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't want to waste uh, time of the other yeah, guys. I don't want to talk I about can't... it on camera. Yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. So call the office or email Daniel. Um, okay. The information's in the, in the comments. Just email him and we can talk next week. Okay, thanks so much. Thanks. Okay. All right. Bye, Musa. See Bye. you, buddy. Did we get the function? It doesn't matter. Oh, I was just curious. All right. So, again, um, filing for adjustment not based on merit. I mean, filing for adjustment out of a B1, B2 is always a problem. It's especially a problem if you do it soon after you arrive and you get married. That's one problem. But lately, we've been seeing these people that come on a non-immigrant visa like a B1, B2 and apply. I mean, to put together a national interest waiver application mm -hmm you have to be working on that for a while mm -hmm. and you have to be making those connections and having those publications. And so the idea that you would just show up here in the United States and apply. When you're here visiting, when you're here visiting, that's and a, didn't have any intent to stay. You're just inviting problems. So I think that, I think that case just on its trouble. face, you may have a good explanation, but on its face, it's causing you problems for sure. We didn't get the industry either. It's okay. Yeah, it's interesting to hear. Somebody's that. thanking you for taking care of me. I think I take. <laughs> I think I we take care of each other. I would say. Thank you, Hassan. I do a pretty good job. <laughs> um, how's he's How's he's causing trouble? Because he knows the Jets aren't in the Super Bowl. Oh, how's he? You know. How's, he? how's he, you know damn well who I'm rooting for? I'm rooting for <laughs> who's ever playing against the Rams. So I'm rooting for the Bengals. We're mad at the Rams. Yep. Yes. I'm a Bengals fan this week. Plus, they haven't won and they've never won. So I'm rooting for him for money. All right, got time more. for one more. You pick. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anybody talk to anybody? Hi, Jane. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm good. What can yeah. we help you and with? Thank you so much for bringing me here because I, I have to, just two questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is, uh, I came here 2013 and uh, 2013 June, and uh, uh, I I filed for a serum uh, in 2014 January, and I have never I didn't I haven't had anything from uh, the immigration. It is this is ninth year now. Did you get a receipt notice? Did you get a piece yes, of paper? I, yeah, I got everything. I even I, I got uh, the, the the social work permit. I have everything. But about you renew the your card every year or two, you renew your work card. Yes. Okay. What country are you from, Jane? I'm from Kenya. You're from Kenya. Okay. Yes. And where do you live now? Where Where are you located? I, I live in in Washington, in Seattle. 
and that's oh state of washington and is that where you yes. filed your immigration case you filed it in seattle washington yes okay nine years wow okay. yeah yeah so yeah what's your question i have some thoughts about something my question is is like uh, maybe uh i had a lawyer is is anything can be done maybe or i have just to wait until when they they maybe they call me or maybe they yeah so nine years is a really long time um i don't think you can certainly file a lawsuit on that do you have any other basis to be in the united states you came as a visitor and then filed right yes you marry do you have anyone who sponsor could sponsor you or anything like that or no no. No. Okay. So your status is essentially this. You've been working. You came as a visitor. You're basically an asylum applicant waiting for an asylum interview and a decision. Yeah. No interview. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Crazy. Okay. Yeah. I got married. I got married last year, but one, but I just got married because I, I just feel like I. it's not about the paper because even that person does not have it. We just love each other. Uh, so... But What's that uh, person's immigration status, Jane? My immigration is that when I came here, the I was no, 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 sorry, the person you married. The person you married. What's that person's immigration status? He didn't have anything. Okay, so she she's she can't help you. Yeah, she he okay. cannot. He cannot. Okay, so, yeah, he can't. so okay. Jane, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. you, you've been waiting a really long time. Mm -hmm. If we if we filed a lawsuit, we could get you an interview on your asylum case in about two or three months. No problem. I have no doubt about that. Right. Mm -hmm. So then the question is, what's going to happen at your interview? So what we've been telling people is, you know, your case has been pending almost 10 years and it definitely needs to be updated because conditions have changed back in your home country. Conditions have changed in your life. So if I were you, what I would do. What we're, what we're telling people now is have us take a look at your case. We'll tell you whether we think it's a strong case or a weak case. We'll tell you whether we think there's things that we could do to make it stronger and then get it stronger and then sue them. Because once we sue them, you're going to have your interview in about three or four weeks, right? Or months. I think weeks. Once we get them served, it's going to be three or four weeks. Yeah, so, if, you know, like that. in two or three months, you're going to have your interview. So it's better to get everything ready. And then once you're ready to sue them, because I, I can get you your interview. I'm not worried about that. But the problem is if your case gets denied, then you get to deportation court, and that's not fun. So you have to make a choice. Do I want to risk it? And raise my hand and say, hey, look at me. Don't forget about me. I've been here since 2013. And when you raise your hand, they could say yes, no, oh, maybe. Come. They could say anything. So you got to be ready for that, right? Okay. So we don't know if that case is strong or not. If that case is not strong, you waited nine years and they could say, nope. You gotta go. Now, when you get to immigration court, you can start all over. You can refile an asylum case. And that's really stressful and not fun. Very stressful. Okay. And chances of success can be low, low. So you need, okay. to, think about, you need to think about what you want to do. You can, either, all right. you can continue waiting. You can work on making the case fresh and updated and, 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 and be ready. better. Especially, I don't, did you file for asylum with a lawyer or without a lawyer? Okay, I filed. Uh, okay, I filed. I filed by myself, and then I got a lawyer, and uh, we did some. I don't know how to call them, but uh, she interviewed me and some documents, and then documents. she okay. submitted. Okay. She submitted them, but even after, even though. Even after that, they didn't do anything. I have, I haven't had anything. I have one other question: Have you been updating your address with them? Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Whenever I change, I, I maybe I change. I'm not, I'm very, not very of like maybe two times, and she always send the address the, that lawyer. Send the what? The address. Change yeah. the address. Oh, the address. Change okay. The yeah. Make sure your address is always up there because I've had clients who didn't realize they missed an interview. So you should make sure you didn't miss it. You can have the lawyer check on the 1 800 number to make sure that you're not, you didn't miss anything. Okay. So that's what happened. They missed the interview and the removal. They didn't even know it. So that's just a really long time. Yeah. So you and your lawyer, yeah. you and your lawyer can complete the case on your own. And then if you want us to sue them, just let us know. Okay, and then I think I don't think according to what you have explained to me, it's, it's I think it's not easy. But I let me ask. 
somebody was teaching somewhere uh, about the laws and he said if you have been here you can apply for travel documents so you can travel to another country yeah you're not that... That. you you should not do that okay the rules the rules would allow you to get a travel document but my advice would be don't do that until after your asylum case is decided okay you have to understand the logic behind asylum is what? Is you're here seeking relief from the United States because there's nowhere else that can help you or save you, right? Yeah. So well, then if you start kind of moving around, you're going to put your case, right. you're put your case at risk, right? Okay. So then you're going to draw attention to yourself until you're ready and you're prepared, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Bye, Jane. Bye, Jane. Bye-bye. Oh, bye. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. I think people really like it when Thank you come on. Thank you we so had a lot much. Of it was my pleasure. Lots of good questions. Lots of good issues today. Good luck, everybody. And Nor would tell us to make sure that if you're not following us, TikTok. You can actually find out where we are on vacation if you go on TikTok because it's on there. Right. The direct. Now. The director of TikTok knows all things. All right. Bye, everybody. Have bye a great guys. night. We'll be back tomorrow at just me at noon Central Time. Noon Central tomorrow. Okay. Peace. Bye, guys.